This is a review on the new Sandmark Tripod Compact Edition. This is a tripod that Sandmark recently released and uh, it's a very nice, small, lightweight, but still very durable and well-made tripod for photographers. Um, whether you're doing phone photography, whether you're doing DSLR or mirrorless photography, it retails for $99.99 or $100 US dollars, which is a pretty good price on it, uh, given what you're getting out of it. And before I actually get into the review, I do want to disclose that this is a sponsored video. Sandmark did send me out this tripod to review for this video, but I do have full creative freedom with the video. Um, there's nothing that I have to say, no script, nothing they gave me. I'm allowed to give my full thoughts on it, all criticisms and all things that I like about it. I'm allowed to say whatever I want. So it is going to be a fully honest review. This isn't going to be skewed by the fact that it was sponsored and Sandmark was gracious enough to send this out to me. But I do also want to mention that I wouldn't be doing this review and I won't ever do any sponsorships on this channel unless it's a product that I believe in, unless it's a product that I think has value to myself and to my viewers. I won't ever use it for a sponsorship. If I didn't believe in this tripod as a good product for photographers, I wouldn't be reviewing it for this video. So I also want to make that clear as well. I'm not just reviewing this because they sent it to me for free. I'm reviewing it because I really do believe in this tripod and I think it has a ton of applications. And especially as you, many of you guys know, I shoot all of my in the field wildlife photography vlogs on my phone. Um, and I think that this is the perfect product for that application using this as a phone tripod. So for people looking to use this as a tripod for phone photography or videography, I think it's a great product for that. And I also think that beyond that, it does have an application for wildlife photographers out there shooting on DSLR and mirrorless cameras, which I know many of you out there watching this channel are, and uh, I'll get a little bit more in detail on that a little bit later in the review. So jumping straight into the review here, the first thing that I want to talk about is the legs on this tripod. This is probably my favorite feature of this tripod. To extend the legs on this tripod, all you have to do is twist the foot to one side, and the entire thing extends out. And then you can adjust it however you want. You can go to just the two notches here, you can go to just the one notch, or you can go all the way out to all three. And to re-tighten it, all you do is twist the foot back, and then you can see that's rock solid, that's not going anywhere, and uh, you've got your legs adjusted. Then if you wanna break it down, all you gotta do is twist it again, and lock it up. So super, super simple mechanism on the legs. Honestly, one of the best mechanisms for the extension of the legs on a tripod that I've ever seen. Um, really in love with that. Makes setup for this quick and easy, um, no matter what you're using it for. You know, you can just pop those legs out real quick and easy and start shooting within a matter of seconds. Um, whereas with a lot of other tripods, whether you have the clips or whether you have the twist, you have to you know twist multiple knobs or unclip multiple clips for each different leg segment, and it just becomes a hassle and becomes a lot more difficult to set up. Um, but for this tripod, just a simple twist to the foot, and uh, you have full control of every segment of the legs. Um, that is one problem right there that you just saw. They do get a little bit jammed occasionally, um, but overall, for the most part, usually pretty flawless flow there, as you can see. Um, so very, very happy with that. Next, moving up to these upper leg adjustments. This is basically how you fold the tripod legs up. And uh, all you have to do for this is uh, to push the leg in a little bit um, to loosen up this plate here. And then you just pull out on the plate. And uh, with that, you can fold the leg up as high as you'd like to go. You can fold it all the way up if you'd like. Or uh, maybe you want to go around mid-range right here and you kind of just want to spread out and get that nice low angle on the tripod with the spread out tripod leg. And to lock the legs back in place, you just push down on this plate and that will lock your tripod leg in place there so that it can't move at all and uh, basically is stuck in that position. And I think that just like using the feet to adjust the height of the tripod legs, this is a really clever design that Sandmark has used here um, for a tripod of this size to be able to adjust the legs and um, fold them up. The one complaint that I have about it, and it's probably my biggest complaint with this tripod, is that it is a little bit stiff, um, especially when you get into certain positions, it can be very difficult to pull this piece out and you have to fight with it and uh, struggle with the tripod leg for a minute to actually get this to pop out so that you can adjust it again. And uh, this is a perfect instance right here where I'm pushing up on this and you know, I'm kind of wiggling the leg around to try to get it into a better position to where it'll pull out. There we go, it finally came out. Um, but you know, it takes a minute of messing around with it to get it into that right position. And most of the time it works perfectly, but there are just a few positions um, that you can get this tripod leg in in which it does not want to come out at all and you're gonna to have to fight with it a little bit to uh, get it to come out maybe this is just user error and there's something that I'm messing up here but um, from all of my testing uh, there have been many times that I've been trying to adjust these legs and uh, it just hasn't wanted to come out so moving on from that the next thing that I want to talk about is the center column here this is just like on any other tripod you do have a center column you can adjust this up or down just like this and um, you have a pretty wide range here you have a few inches there to play with so you know that adds a decent amount of extra extra height to your tripod if you need it to extend it out 
and uh, obviously again just like any other tripod that you have uh, that center column can just be tightened by this knob right here now moving on up here we've got the ball head portion and uh, obviously you have a couple of different adjustment knobs here you've got this one right here which obviously allows you to rotate this entire portion in a full 360 moving on up to the next knob you have the ball head and um, this is also pretty flawless motion a pretty well designed ball head and one of the things that I really love about this is that it has that perfect amount of friction against the ball to where you have full fluid motion on the tripod head at any time but can also you know just stop moving it at any time without adjusting any tension knobs and uh, leave it as it is and it'll still hold the phone in that position which is very very nice um, and then obviously you know you can do landscape mode like that or you can turn it down and have your phone vertical but moving the ball head back up into this position next we'll talk about the uh, very top here where you can see you have a simple plate and clip mechanism here at the top uh, you got the plate here and as of right now I have the phone attachment attached to this you can always take that attachment off and attach this plate to the bottom of your camera and then use your camera on this tripod if you'd like to do that as well and this tripod does actually come with this phone attachment as a part of the package so just to briefly show you how that works you can see here that you basically just raise this top portion up can place your phone in between there and then let it go back down and tighten around your phone and it's going to hold your phone in place and hold it to the tripod pretty simple there um, you can also see that it is angled which helps to hold your phone in place better but they do have these nice pads on there that don't have any teeth or anything like that they're just nice smooth pads so that it doesn't cut into the side of your phone and damage your phone case or your phone itself and with that guys i think that i've now covered all features of this tripod um like i said very nice lightweight compact design with easy setup and breakdown um besides the little problem that you often have with these pieces right here on the legs but i do want to talk a little bit about the application for this tripod before i end this review um so first of all obviously for someone doing phone photography or videography or you know making youtube videos like i am out in the field um this tripod can be applied for that very well. It's nice and easy to carry and set up. And with this, you don't have to go through the process of setting up a big, large tripod just to take a quick clip with your phone. Um, with this tripod, you can quickly and easily set it up or even leave it set up. I leave it set up and just lay it in the back of my truck and uh, can carry it around like that to film phone clips on, which is very, very nice. And I think for someone who is looking to up their game in phone photography or videography, this is the perfect option as a tripod for you. But like I said at the beginning of the video, I do also think that this tripod does actually have an application for photographers who are shooting on mirrorless or DSLR cameras, even wildlife photographers out there, which, you know, we tend to have heavier gear um, than you would think that a tripod like this could support, but it actually can for some cases. I think for someone that is going into the backcountry um, and is looking for wildlife, or maybe if you're a landscape photographer, um, but specifically for this video, I want to talk about wildlife because that's mainly what I do on this channel. Um, if you're looking for wildlife, you're probably not carrying your big prime lenses into the backcountry with you. Um, you know, I, I know many people will, but not everyone will be carrying those lenses into there you might be carrying a lens that is more like the 100 to 400 that i have up here um, so for a lens like that that weighs a little bit less than four pounds um, if you're shooting on that and then say you're shooting on the canon r5 which is what i shoot on um, and then that weighs about 1.6 pounds um, so in total you're carrying around 5.5 pounds um, of camera gear of, of your camera and your lens um, but this tripod can actually support believe it or not 6.5 pounds so you could actually attach this plate to your 100 to 400 and use this tripod in the backcountry to photograph wildlife with that lens and with a camera like the r5 it would work for you perfectly and because this tripod is small you already have that nice low angle that you always want to have for wildlife and you can use it pretty easily for that when you're taking those smaller lenses and smaller camera bodies that weigh less into the backcountry you can also take a tripod that weighs less and supports less weight to support your camera gear and with that you'll obviously be carrying around less weight and have more room for other stuff in your backpack so i do really think this does have an application for wildlife photographers in that way now one downside is that this tripod does have a ball head on it and um, for wildlife it would be more ideal that you have a gimbal head on your tripod um, which is a topic that i did an entirely different video on pretty recently but i do think that especially when you're going out into the backcountry and you're using your more lightweight telephoto lenses and camera bodies um, it's easier to get away with not having a gimbal head and with using a ball head because you don't have as much weight on that tripod so it's still relatively easy to control on a ball head as opposed to if you're using you know a, a huge telephoto prime lens um, and a more heavy camera body like a canon 1dx then uh, you're gonna need a gimbal head more so with that guys i think that i've covered all of my thoughts on the sandmark compact edition tripod again huge thanks to sandmark for sending this tripod out and if you are interested in purchasing this tripod i will link sandmark's website down below if you would like to check that out now before i close this out i do want to remind you guys to subscribe for that 1000 subscriber yellowstone trip giveaway um, that i'll be giving more details on when i hit a thousand subscribers hopefully here pretty soon um, it's going to be a totally free trip to yellowstone national park to photograph wildlife that i'm giving away this fall um, so all you have to do 
to have a chance to enter that is be a subscriber to the channel. And I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and that for those of you that are out there looking at buying this tripod that you found this video helpful. And I thank you guys so much for watching this video and for your support on this channel. Thank you all for this one, guys. I will see you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.